You know how they have A in Pretty Little Liars and they always wear like a hoodie to be mysterious? And I'm doing Mona today. She would always wear the A hoodie. So that's why. You're so cute. Okay, I feel like really watched. <laughs> you guys are just standing there <laughs> silently staring at me. <laughs> Okay, so today's Pretty Little Lies video essay is all about Mona, the wolf in sheep's clothing, someone who isn't really considered a main character, which I consider a great shame because for me she is one of the most, if not the most, important characters. And I've talked about all the girls now, which makes me so happy. God, I love doing these videos. It is so much fun to sit here and talk to you guys about these characters. I grew up watching that. They didn't form my identity because I've got my own identity but somehow I just loved watching these girls in the show and I always found it so inspiring so I love that I can share all of that on YouTube but I never thought I would have a space where I can sit here and talk about these characters and share it with people because I had all these thoughts but no one to talk about it with which was always so frustrating so I'm so glad I can do this and I've been looking forward to it so much. Mona is shown to be smarter than Spencer which is maybe why she never became part of the main group or clique because she always solved stuff pretty fast so it almost worked better to have Mona working against them so they had that obstacle but when Mona was with them I think they would have solved stuff a lot faster also just even when Mona was left out of the loop there was so much stuff she knew about to do with hacking and stuff that would actually help them without her stuff moves a lot slower so maybe the writers realized that having Mona there would actually mean the show was over in like two seasons. Mona's a really good character she's not severely underused like Noel or Jason where they're barely in the show. I don't know how to explain it. It's more to do with her relationships with the other girls. It always feels slightly anticlimactic and disappointing or with Mona's friendships and relationships in general. You're hoping to see her settled with friends or maybe a boyfriend and it just doesn't feel like that at the end. But aside from that, when you look at her as a character, she is one of the best parts of the show, one of the best and most complex characters there and someone where it was like they were actually putting a lot of thought into to her character and the things she'd say and do which I'm really appreciative for because sometimes with the others it felt like what they were doing truly made no sense. She's really mean and sometimes you hate her guts and she can be really malicious but other times she grows and she's actually really quite sweet and really adorable and then other times she's a badass and she's solving clues and showing she's a bit of a mastermind in some ways much more intelligent than Spencer but because she's such a great character I think some of the fandom forget the bad stuff she did because they're so focused on the good stuff. I want to talk about her evolution throughout all the seasons, stuff I liked, stuff I disliked and the way she changed. Mona was born in Rosewood and raised by a single mom. I really wanted more details on Mona's dad and her family life. We got some but I really would have liked to see more like how she was raised because that would explain a lot. Mona was friends with Hannah but then Hannah left her to be in Alison's clique and as a result it was a little disappointing because Sorry, it's just my bit of dragons walking around. It's really cute. He's licking all the surfaces. I don't know why. I don't know why he does that. It's just so funny. He's so small. And Mona was then subjected to intense bullying by Allison, where the other girls, including Hannah, were not actually intervening or telling her off. They weren't reporting it to a member of authority or a parent or a teacher or anyone. They were just laughing along quietly or pretending it wasn't happening. Obviously, they valued Allison's friendship so much they didn't want to challenge her in case she disliked them but as a result Mona was left out and the other girls they weren't even including her or trying to branch out and make other friends they were just friends with Allison and that was it. Allison called Mona loser Mona because of how nerdy she was and the clothes she wore. Hi Allison. I really like your hair. I've been trying to get my hair like that but it just won't cooperate. Mona there are cancer patients with better hair. If I were you and I'm happy that I'm not I would stop trying. And so Mona was really affected by this and she began to send Allison 
messages, text messages and stuff threatening her, trying to scare her. She even tried to kill her. But then when Alison went missing and Mona had more details on Alison's disappearance than she gave away, Mona became all popular and she dressed up. She made herself look all cute. She did some worrying things to lose weight that she said really casually, but I was like, you did what? That doesn't sound healthy at all. But anyway, she became friends with Hannah and they started to rule the school together. And it was like Mona was trying to fill Alison's place. Now I've started watching Cruel Summer. I want to have a review out about that as soon as I can because I'm loving it so much and I feel like it's everything Pretty Little Lies wanted to be or wished it could be but at points PLL couldn't quite deliver a few things. I see a lot of similarities between PLL and Cruel Summer. Wanting to take over someone's life, wanting to be them. There are so many themes of that throughout Cruel Summer and you can see that with how Mona couldn't just be her own popular girl or her own version of a stalker or an online bully. She wanted to do it Alison's way. It's like I can't be strong or vindictive or creepy by myself. I have to be Alison in order to do that. So Mona couldn't be her own person. She had to be like Alison and it all boils down to the fact that Mona is actually insecure throughout a majority of the show, something in my eye. And she starts bullying Lucas and calling him really nasty names which shows that sometimes even when you're a victim you can become a victimizer and a bully and unfortunately it only excuses your actions so much like there's only so much you can use that until you actually need to take responsibility and acknowledge you're not being a good person despite this she wanted hannah to herself and she knew she could see it happening that hannah was starting to drift back to girls like spencer and aria and emily and forget about mona and that's one of the things that makes us sympathize with mona because as much as she pretends she's all awesome and she rules the school she doesn't actually have any friends she cares about aside from hannah and hannah isn't spending time with her anymore more. And I hate to admit it, but I kind of think it's true. Like even if Mona had never gone to the A-team and never had betrayed Hannah in that way, I still think there would have been this distance. Hannah would have always kept her slightly at arm's length because she does prefer her other friends. And that's me being completely honest. And I think Mona could sense it too. I'm not lying. I think Mona picked up on that as well. That's something that makes us feel bad for her because we all know what that's like to be the third wheel or to not be included. Whereas in the books, Mona's character was different. She hated Hannah and the girls, but she was just a lot more unlikable and mean. And also there was no reason for her to be like, oh, Hannah's left me. Hannah doesn't want to be my friend anymore because Hannah Hannah was actually actively spending time with Mona. She really loved Mona and the other girls not so much. Mona was her number one. Mona was her priority. So it's quite different. A lot of people like Mona because maybe she lives out a fantasy of wanting to take revenge on the people who treated you badly. Maybe other people have been bullied. They can relate to her. Or maybe they like her different dimensions, her cute side, her fun side, her vulnerable side, her hurt side, the part of her that makes you realize that really at the end of the day, all Mona kind of wants was compassion and when she didn't get kindness and love and good treatment she snapped a bit. Even the fact that she was dating Noel Khan and you're wondering why are you dating him Mona? Is it to uphold your status or is it because you actually like him? I didn't know but she seemed so upset then when he ditched her and didn't seem to care about her and disrespected her. The liars clearly don't like Mona very much and are like ill. we don't want to spend time with her. They were not open to opening the group for Mona and that makes it worse and then Mona started stalking the girls and sending them mean messages. That includes Hannah. So a lot of people will dismiss anything bad Mona does, like I said, but we have to acknowledge that she was harassing Hannah in particular, who's like her best friend apparently, and these other girls who didn't deserve it, being really mean and upsetting them and blackmailing them. In the season two finale, Mona revealed herself to be A, there was this whole fight, everyone found out, and Mona ended up in Radley to get treatment for her mental health problems and other things she had going on with her. Of course I hoped I would be A, you know, mm -hmm. since it's such a fun character to play. Um, and then about a week before we shot the finale, um, I got this script and there it was and it was just really exciting. So that was definitely the biggest challenge. Um, you know, when I got the script because I'm actually playing three different characters in the finale and you know, I get to play nerdy Mona, um, I get to play popular Mona, and then crazy Mona. Uh -huh. um, and uh, the most interesting part of that is trying to find that switch um, and be a completely different character. So I had to let go of the character I played for two years yeah. and completely just 
have a totally different darker character. When she was harassing them, they didn't know it was her. It was anonymous, which shows again that she is quite cowardly. But just the letter A was all the girls knew about this stalker. And what's so funny is even then, it's not like the letter was M, it's A. So Mona's again trying to be Alison. So to be honest, when this person's stalking the girls, it never felt like Mona behind the scenes. It felt like Mona doing what she thought Alison would do, trying to be Alison. As this whole reveal is happening, you see that Mona's behavior as the it girl was a facade. She's an actress. She was acting. That's why whenever I watched it, I remember thinking when we were first introduced to her, who is this girl? She's so fake. Like, I thought she was a badly written character because I thought no one is this sugary, sweet, and vapid. She's acting. Like, what is this? She's not a real human. Turns out there was a lot more depth to Mona. She was acting the whole time. She was playing dumb. The reveal was really good, I thought, because it was emotional. It was climatic, though I had have to say I didn't like that Hannah wasn't there in person when the reveal happened finding it out and talking to Mona that kind of dampened it and also it was a little bit predictable I couldn't think of anyone else it really could be because we were spending so much time with Mona up towards the A reveal and then in the final few episodes before the A reveal it's like they were bringing her in more a little bit obvious you could see it a mile away in season three she was promoted from a recurring cast member to a series regular for the third season so she plays a bigger role in the third season. Someone in a red coat, someone on the A team was talking to her, trying to get her involved in the A game again. And so once she received treatment, she was considered emotionally stable and released, but she was still addicted to this game and she was pulled back into it and still wanted to hurt the liars. Nothing had really changed. She tries to make amends with Hannah and that's a bit of a mess. And she's being really sweet with Hannah, like, please trust me. It just seems a bit fake. And I understand why Hannah's being a little cautious because you never know whether you can trust Mona or not or whether it's fake or not if it's genuine or not you're always second guessing her because she's saying all these lovely things but you're wondering behind the scenes are you saying mean things about me or what if something goes wrong what if we miscommunicate one day or there's a fight and you just turn to me and start attacking me Mona's quite volatile and her emotions are all over the place she's not steady in season 3a Hannah is visiting Mona in Radley and Hannah's really emotional she's saying why did you hate me so much and she's trying to get answers answers from Mona but Mona's not communicating with her or having an open conversation with her at all but she was on all these drugs and medication and she couldn't really think straight so she was hallucinating a bit and it was all over the place so I'm not sure she was trying to be nasty she's in this weird disassociative daydreamy state so I'm not sure she was in her right mind but it upsets Hannah because she's not getting that closure and that discussion Mona is so out of it to the point that she has this hallucination that Hannah is actually Allison sitting in the chair. To be fair on Mona, I'm sure if she was a bit more with it, she would have been able to communicate with Hannah more normally. But when she comes back to school in season 3B, she apparently is okay, but she's hiding a lot and she's still definitely on the A team. She's being especially mean to Spencer, less so to Hannah, but she's really honing in on Spencer and it's kind of like she thought, oh, I'll join the A team, but I'll give Hannah a bit of a break. I mean, not really, but it's like she's really hyper focused focusing on Spencer in season 3B and just trying to ruin Spencer's life. She doesn't like any of them, but it's especially prudent that she's focused on Spencer. And in this episode, Mona Mania, it's revealed how smart Mona is because she outwits Spencer in this competition. She's saying Spencer's crazy. She's taunting Spencer over her traumatic breakup with Toby. And then she's saying, oh, do you even have any friends, Spencer? And she's trying to push Spencer, which I thought was awful. I was not a fan of Mona. She's very much nasty and sadistic at this point. And Spencer confronts Mona about being sent this wreath with the words deepest sympathy on it. I think because, what was it? She found Toby presumably dead or something. Something bad had happened and then this anonymous wreath was delivered to her. So she's coming to Mona like, is this one of your A tricks? What the hell is this? Sending me this wreath basically making fun of me. You know, what is this? And then Mona's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's playing dumb, which is so annoying because obviously she knows the truth, but she's just not being open about it. And then she tells Spencer not to put orchids in the sunlight like she did and they won't make it through the night otherwise before leaving so it was basically a thinly veiled threat at this point in the show I didn't like Mona very much no one in the school even likes Mona the only person who seems to have a positive attitude towards her is Jason do you remember he gave her a hug what was that about
hmm? some sort of relationship I don't know I have no idea but it is revealed at the end of season 3b that Mona didn't know quite as much as we thought she did because you sort of get the impression with Mona she's on top of it all the time and she knows everything but she really had no idea who Uba A was she was in the dark just as much as the other girls and she said that red coat had kind of stolen the game from her and taken over so it's outside of her control now and she's no longer making the decisions or calling the shots or knowing what's going on because there's greater things at play here and I kind of find that hilarious because Mona seems shocked she's being portrayed when red coat sets the house on fire Mona's there too so she's gonna die in this fire and she's almost like wait I didn't expect this to happen red coat would try and kill me and throw me under the bus too but it's so funny because of course they would you know you're nothing more than a pawn in their game and this is the first time I think ever throughout the whole show that you realize that Mona isn't like this all-seeing all-powerful being she's really useless when this fire's happening she's panicking and she's like oh my god what are we gonna do like we're gonna die now Mona will be kicked off the A-team because she's no longer trustworthy so Mona ends up joining ranks with the liars maybe because she thought if she was on her own she was dead meat in season four this is the most interesting part in my opinion in terms of Mona's evolution in the fourth season there starts to be the shift till the middle of the season where Mona's hardcore being set up as the fifth liar as in she's starting to hang out with all the girls getting to know all of them not just one on one all of them in the group she's having more group scenes with them she's you know talking to them it seems like they might reach some sort of understanding I think everyone wants to know is Mona a PLL now is she no longer a and um, the answer is that Mona is no longer a mm -hmm. uh, she now is forced to join the girls even though they don't really like each other um, to figure out who this new a is I think every single week like you said someone's on a different team and <laughs> and someone's good and someone's bad or I'm good and then I'm crazy and but it's fun I think that's what keeps everyone coming back from wars you know it keeps everyone on their toes but then in season 4b it's done and the focus is very much on Allison and trying to figure out if she's alive or not and get her home and talk to her. It's like they realized, oh, we actually want the attention to be on Allison now, setting it up for when she comes back. There are two paths to choose between. Do we go down the route of Allison or Mona? Because we can't incorporate them both into the group. One of them needs to be like the good guy and the other one needs to be the bad guy. What are we going to do? And they chose to incorporate Allison, which makes me really sad because I would love it if Allison became a part of the group, but only if she betrayed the girls at the end. I wanted her to be the big bad. And with Mona, I would have loved to see maybe them thinking she was the big bad, but she was actually good all along. And then her becoming part of the group and bonding with them. But it seems almost like the opposite, which is so annoying. I was really hoping, oh, but it doesn't matter because they made the decision to bring Allison in as a friend and have Mona more as an outsider. But in season 4A, she plays third degree and she reveals what she knows and what she doesn't know. And they're still being quite sketchy with each other. Like, I'll give you some information if you give me some information. They're not just having an open conversation. But in the morning when the girls wake up, Mona is trying with them because she comes in with their favorite coffee drinks and breakfast. She's trying, but then Mona tries to rekindle the relationship she has with Hannah and they go shopping, try to make it like old times, but Hannah's just not feeling it, which upsets Mona. Mona hands over this computer chip they need as like a gesture of friendship almost. And she proves she's a ride or die friend when she trains Hannah to confess to the murder of Wilden. And she's giving her tips on how to make it convincing, how not to screw it up. And then when Hannah can't do it, she goes in herself. So Hannah and her mum won't be in trouble and won't go to jail. So she throws herself under the bus. The girls are kind of suspicious. They're not like, oh my God, Mona, you're so sweet. They're just shocked. Like, what's she playing at? You know, what's in it for her? What's she doing? I get why the girls would be suspicious. But at this point, Mona sacrificed so much for Hannah. I think it's because she actually wanted to help. And she knows she can do it because she's good at this stuff. But then in season 4B, there's this very apparent shift where it's like oh no Mona's the bad guy and suddenly the girls are like oh don't talk to me Mona I'm not feeling it and there's this distance again created between them she starts dating Mike and Aria is immediately like oh my god what are we gonna do and she talks to this guy called Jesse or something and she's like we have to stop this from happening and Jesse's like Jesus calm down and Aria's like we can't we can't have this and she's thinking what is Mona playing at why is she trying to get close to my family and then they have Mona like appear in Aria's bedroom looking around her room and Ari's like 
get out of my room. Like you didn't have permission to be in my room. Now it was hilarious, but it made Mona look evil. And Mona's being all suspicious again. Like, oh, nice wallpaper, Aria. It's so rude to go into someone's room without permission. But also it shows this hostility between Mona and Aria. Like Mona's trying to pin Aria down for something or get her in trouble. And then Aria's like, why are you dating my brother? And then she's being mean to Mona to try and stop Mona from dating Mike. And I was feeling like I was on Aria's side but also I kind of felt bad for Mona because she and Mike kind of had a nice thing going on. And then in season five, Alison is revealed to be alive and she's returning to Rosewood. And so Mona's feeling super threatened by this and she forms her own army of students and people who are victimized by Alison to try and band up against her. And she's talking to people like Lucas, which is the last thing you'd expect, but they're actually collaborating. And she's like, we have to do this. Hell's gonna break loose. She's like, we need to prepare. So she's got all her forces out and she's, being really extra nasty around Alison, but I think it's a defense mechanism because I was not on Mona's side at multiple points with how she was interacting with Alison, getting all involved up in Alison's face and stuff. But I think that was Mona's way of trying to assert, you know, the rules are different now and I'm at the top of the school hierarchy now and that's not going to change. So get over it. And I don't think she wanted to hide from Alison. I think she wanted to be big and loud and say, look, I'm different now. During this time, she was still having this kind of on and off again relationship relationship with Mike and Mike seemed to know and understand Mona better than anyone else. He said he was in love with her but then he also acknowledged Mona wasn't nice, she wasn't this sugary person but she's just Mona, you know, she's strong. So it's like he knew what she was and what she wasn't. He knew what he was signing up for and he knew the kind of person she was. And Janelle Parrish, the actress, said it was left anonymous a little bit, but she genuinely believed that Mona liked Mike. And I agree with that because it sort of came through in her acting. It didn't seem to me like Mona was faking. And that makes me even more frustrated that they didn't end up together and in the finale she's just kissing some random French guy because I could really see something there with her and Mike and they were like my favorite couple they were my favorite couple which is so funny because they're barely in the show but something about the fact that they seem to just know exactly who each other were was so appealing to me please let me know if you feel the same way I have no idea what drew me to them so much it felt like in the beginning Mona's intentions with Mike weren't pure and she was like oh I'm going to date him for information I'm going to date him so I can get close to Aria and I think Ezra was blackmailing her to do stuff at that point but there was a genuine connection that started to form with Mike and it was scaring Mona and at later points she was trying to protect him like when she was going to fake her own death she did not want Mike to be involved in that because she didn't want him to get hurt and she was actively trying to create some space between them because she didn't want him to be involved in her whole mess so I do think the feelings evolved into something really real which makes me even more annoyed it wasn't like a long term thing because honestly it's just one of those things that the show picked up and then dropped and it's very jarring to watch because you you're like wait where did that relationship go what happened I don't like it there was no real resolution to that I don't think we even saw a breakup and that really annoys me and it shows again how Mona really should have been given some more attention like I know she's not a Spencer Hastings or the main character of the whole show but to me she is so I would have have I would have loved it if she got a bit more investment. Mona's romances and friendships outside of the lies definitely deserved more attention. I wanted to know by the finale that Mona has a circle of friends. She has people who care about her, but I just felt like she was as lonely as ever in the final season, which really hurt me because everyone deserves love, you know, and she didn't really have anyone. And her not having love was the whole point of the reason she became A, her being isolated, her being loser Mona, her being alone. So I was hoping that there would be this arc where she actually has a small circle of really close close friends by the end but when that doesn't happen oh my gosh I know she's a lone wolf and everything but at the end of the day when people say they're a lone wolf not everyone's a lone wolf everyone needs someone to connect to we're humans you know we everyone is a social creature to some extent and Mona yet yeah, never really knew anyone and at the end she's with this random French guy we don't even know which was like okay but why what happened with her romances as well like where was the focus there it's so weird because the show was so romance oriented there was this <laughs> so funny there was this thing with Caleb I could never understand between Mona and Caleb that I find so funny was that intentional or was it not intentional I feel like the writers were trying to establish they had this kind of 
tension and they didn't quite trust each other and they both love Hannah so they're really possessive and kind of jealous of each other but somehow it was that at first but then it became something really off I'm not sure if they noticed how it came across but it was so funny it's like she was always open to having this kind of relationship with Caleb and getting to know him but he was just like nope I don't want that but I always kind of felt like he kind of did want that but he didn't know how to express it the two of them were making coffee and then he poured milk into her cup for her and then she dropped what was it a sugar cube into his and they weren't even looking at each other they were just doing it like automatically as if they're an old married couple and they just do that for years and they that's just what they do but why that made me feel like they actually know each other really well because they know what they want in their tea and stuff and they're used to doing this which then made me think how often do they hang out outside of the camera in situations where we just don't know what's happening but it's happening that was bizarre and that kind of seemed like a couple -y thing to do as well and they were so in sync like their their movements and their gestures and they were just like completely attuned to what the other person was doing which kind of made it seem like they were dating I mean it was sexual tension I don't know how else to describe it I mean it was just that the actors had it so it came across but it's absolutely hilarious because they never date on the show they barely have any scenes there shouldn't be that at all because that's pretty weird but then every scene they had together there was this this tension and this weirdness between them and you know the stuff they said to each other even if it was negative was really charged and I was just so confused as to what was going on and it kind of made me annoyed they didn't date because it would have been hilarious and oh my gosh you know that one time they had to kiss to find out who A was because it was part of the plan which truly makes no sense to me because normally you know in shows when writers get two characters to kiss because they have to or they have to pretend to be dating they can be a couple and they can end up together at the end so when that happened I thought Mona and Caleb would be a thing because like I said you're never put in those situations unless it's for a reason Mona would always try and like look at him <laughs> and create this eye contact and be like oh so that's great we can work together then we'll be a good team and Caleb was like oh yeah I guess so and would roll his eyes and it's so weird the liars and Mona thought Allison was a so Mona helped them dig up information on Allison which was helpful she does so much for them and that's one thing that bugged me is I know they don't need to love her or be her best friend or whatever but often she would do really helpful stuff for them and they'd be like thank you so much Mona like we appreciate it can you do this for us but then when they didn't need her they were really rude to her so they kind of used her then Mona faked her death so she was believed to be murdered in her home because there was so much blood it couldn't have been an accident and it was ruled a homicide but she never believed Allison was A basically she had this whole plan so she was telling the girls you know Allison's A and she was helping them but she had something else in mind but the whole plan was went terribly wrong because she was going to find out who A was but A sort of knew that and A kidnapped her before she could kind of figure more stuff out. Then the lives were kidnapped too and taken to the dollhouse and they realized Mona was alive and had basically been waiting for them kidnapped as well and Mona was forced by A to practically become Allison and you know dye her hair blonde and wear Allison's clothes from the night she disappeared um, which would really mess with your identity because the whole point is Mona needs to get her own identity away from Allison and not be her but she was talking like Allison because the webcam wanted her to so she was like okay I'm Allison and I'm doing this and it was really creepy and she was tortured and starved left in a hole and it was really awful but I do have to say in a way I almost wished that Mona had died at the end of season five or halfway through because I think it would have really upped the stakes and it would have made us a lot more scared of A particularly because I'm not really satisfied with where Mona went at the end and it was a little underwhelming I almost would have liked it if she just died to make A seem really scary the girls are united against a common enemy they're all scared they all are working together and Mona's giving them tips and you can see again them starting to bond Mona almost becoming one of them especially because Allison wasn't there and they're all in the same boat you know and Mona was being nicer she was being sweet she was being helpful and I kind of wanted to see a shift in the way the girls treated her after that in season six the girls left the dollhouse luckily and Mona was sent away for a bit to recuperate and have some therapy and recover and when she came back she wanted to help the liars in finding out who A was so Mona was following the girls around at points to try and stop them from screwing stuff up like one time they were in a lab and she turned up and she said she's trying to stop the lab from suing them 
them. And five years later, after the A reveal, Mona returns to Rosewood to testify A or CeCe's release from a mental hospital. And she said CeCe should be released because Mona has, you know, this compassion. She's like, oh, just let CeCe go home to her family. That's all we want, isn't it? You know, just to be free. So let her go. And Mona reconnects with Hannah, enters into a fashion business with her. They're not best buds, but they're on speaking terms. They're collaborating. And I really liked that. Despite sort of the mistakes, there are a few that the show made with Mona's character. I love that they had her and Hannah actually relating. I thought that was really well done. Having conversations at least. At least they were talking. And at one point Hannah had been a moron and she'd kidnapped Noel Khan. Hannah had him tied up so Mona was like, oh we've got to coach you so you know what to tell the police. And she was really helpful. Mona's really trying to. I feel like at this point she's grown so much because they were telling her, oh can you help us, you know, uncover this clue. AD sent us. And Mona's like, I don't want to because I'm going to get like addicted to the game again. I don't want to touch that or think about it. And I could see that she was trying and you know, she's got a problem, but she's trying to not do what she used to do. But even then the girls still keep her at a distance. Aria was annoyed about the rehearsal dinner and Mona being invited there. When Mona turned up for Hannah's rehearsal dinner, Hannah seemed annoyed she was there. She was like, oh, how awkward. Mona had given her this really heartfelt present and Hannah was like, thanks all awkwardly and it was just so annoying that there was no sort of progression there and they still weren't really friends and in the finale ad sends ren to kill mona but mona offers to join the ad team and she works with uber a against the girls this whole finale seemed so like rushed but anyway she was working against the girls because this is the final episode of the show and mona hit spencer in the face and sent her off to ad so i thought mona must be a bad guy but no she was trying to help the girls and she was you know pretending to to be bad in order to be good. She brings a police officer to arrest Alex and Mary to save Spencer and the officer is actually Mona's French boyfriend so somehow they managed to take A and A's mum to France somehow and keep them locked up in this dollhouse. I don't know. It's too far-fetched for me. I know they're trying to say symbolically that Mona won the game after all. She's the ultimate mastermind. You know, she's always wanted control, so it's nice that now she can always have these two people in her basement to play with. But it's just too ridiculous for me. The fact that it was this actual dollhouse that she had down in her basement underneath this shop and how illogical that is because the police would be wanting to look into stuff and then they'd be like well where is Alex and then the girls never question where Alex went. Like, the whole thing does not make any sense when you think about how the liars would be contacting the police to see what was happening with Alex. Like, would she go to trial over it? Would she end up in jail? And the police would be like, what do you mean? We don't have her. And then they'd say she'd escape. Like, oh, it makes no sense. It's so dumb. I just hate it. It also made me worried for Mona. What if one day AD escapes and kills Mona or attacks her? Like, why would she want this for herself? I think there could be a more subtle way of showing that Mona's got control in the end without doing that. It was a little tacky. There are just a few things I want to talk about now as we wrap up. The first of which being, should the girls have forgiven Mona? Should she have been incorporated back into the group? It's a really big topic of controversy I think and debate among the fans like people really disagree or agree about this one of my last videos I'd said oh I really don't like the way the girls treated Mona I kind of think it would have been nice if by the seventh season they were kind of friends and they enjoyed each other's company and they actually saw her as a human being and saw a nice side of her but I had a lot of people like really angry at me in the comments saying you know how dare you if it's a stalker that's so inappropriate and like we can't romanticize that and they did the right thing and then I, and I had other people being like oh I so agree with you you're so right Mona deserves the world what a sweet lamb so the oh my gosh there's such a spectrum here and you can be like on one end or the other but seeing both those comments did make me realize that maybe I was a bit too positive towards Mona and in some ways the more kind of negative people are right because Mona had hit Hannah with a freaking car she'd bullied the girls she'd stalked them and yes I know it's just a tv show but maybe it's just too much to ask for the girls to forgive Mona because people were saying Mona's earned their forgiveness. Mona deserves it. It's more than enough. And the truth is the girls don't owe Mona anything and they don't need to forgive her if they don't want to. It's okay if they set boundaries. So I agree with that. And there's also, I think, just too much history and awkwardness and trauma there for them to ever relate to each other normally. Um, so now I'm pretty, I'm pretty neutral about the situation. At the same time, I do support Mona and I want the best for her. And I see her light and her 
cuteness and the fact that underneath I think she's just a hurt kid who wants to be loved which makes me feel for her. The girls played a part in Mona becoming the way she was um, and becoming a bully but they never seem to actually think about that which always pissed me off. They never seem to reflect on what's my role in this and did I cause something. Additionally Mona was giving them advice and being really helpful at points but they were pretty ungrateful. Also they were happy to forgive Allison and Ezra for doing really horrific illegal things but not Mona. A little bit iffy. Um, additionally, even before Mona was A, when Mona was just the normal Queen B, or when Mona was a loser Mona, the girls were so freaking mean and never reaching out. They were just in their bubble, which I didn't like. And finally, the show was getting quite stale in the later seasons, and just the dynamics were getting a bit you know, repetitive and I think it would have been really cool to spice it up and bring Mona in as one of the main girls. Mona would have been a much better kind of friend to have in the clique than Alison because Alison lost all her personality and Alison would have been so much better as a villain. So if anyone should be in the group, if you should add one more member, it should be Mona. Thing is, if they want to forgive people like Toby, that's fine because all Toby did was join the A-team and let Spencer think he was dead. It was really bad, but it wasn't as bad as the stuff Mona did. So I get them forgiving him and not Mona. But what I don't get is them like forgiving Ezra when Ezra was a grown man dating an underage child and he was like stalking them and all this really gross stuff and they're fine to forgive him but not Mona and even to forgive Allison and not Mona is a little odd I guess and but at the same time like Mona was anonymously cyber bullying the girls because even with Allison when she was bullying the girls a bit they knew who she was you know they knew it whereas Mona was hiding under this false name and stalking them behind a screen which is really cowardly but the one thing I don't get is Ezra you forgive Ezra but not Mona and they're so accommodating towards Ezra, like best buddies, oh, you and Arya are soulmates. So the double standard is very obvious there, and that's something I, I really don't like. Finally, I want to say how the show portrayed mental illness because Mona is one of the main characters that kind of represents people who might have, you know, a personality disorder or a mental illness or something that affects their life. And I have to say, I didn't like the portrayal of mental illness with Mona. I know Troy and Belisario had a problem with it too, and she went to talk to the show about how they were portraying mental health and stuff. But with Mona, her mental illness felt like a plot device. Whenever they needed something to happen, her to be in the A-team, her to do something bad, they thought, well, it makes sense if she's got a mental illness. So the excuse can be, oh, she did that because she's crazy. She's crazy. Rather than putting time in to think about her motives and cause and effects, they can go, who cares? It doesn't need to be logical. She's crazy. Crazy people aren't logical. It's like they didn't put thought into what exactly does she have going on with her? You know, when did it start forming in her? Um, how does it affect her? What is it? Talking to doctors and psychologists and people who actually know about it to make it accurate. It felt like they weren't even fully sure themselves what it was or how to diagnose it or anything. So I don't know a whole lot about about this stuff so it's like me writing a book about it or a tutorial and then posting it all on YouTube acting as if I knew about it or understood it when I didn't you know because I don't so I can't speak in it we know she doesn't always see reality as it should be like she hallucinates or something occasionally she has an obsession with control and dominance and she's a great actress she switches personas her identity is really fragmented a death obsession like the Ouija board contacting spirits but there's a whole lot we don't know about her they didn't say really what that all meant. It was just like a bunch of worrying signs and things, but I didn't know how to put it all together. And she's been called Madhouse Mona, Nutjob Mona, Crazy Mona, and all this stuff. But like, that doesn't help me understand what's wrong with her. And also like, it's just really mean. She's a human being. And also such a high percentage of us struggle with mental health, anxiety, mental illnesses, personality disorders, whatever. So many. What is it? Is it like one in four people? Maybe more. So many people. It is common, even if it's just something as simple as anxiety. So to stigmatize it is comical because it's ridiculous because so many people struggle with something like this that you're making fun of such a huge amount of the population. It's like the girls weren't trying to understand what's wrong with her. Did she have control over her actions or not? They were just hating her and that's what I didn't like. They had no sort of sympathy or let me understand this. What's going on with her? They were just like, oh, I don't like her. And it made it seem like you're incapable of having loving relationships and you don't deserve care 
own love if you've got a mental illness or something because you're unlovable or you're damaging or dangerous and you can't be forgiven for stuff you did in the past because you're evil and you're unpredictable and nothing you do makes any sense and additionally there is this psychologist Dr Sullivan you know she was Mona's therapist for a while not realizing Mona was a she knew there was an a out there stalking people she didn't know it was Mona and why was Mona seeing a therapist in the first place why was Mona there I don't think they explained that but why was Mona there to talk about what I want to know the psychologist eventually ended up giving like a definition of Mona's mental illnesses to the girls and she was like oh guys Mona did this to you because she's in a state of hyper reality and the adrenaline rush that accompanied her feelings of empowerment and her high level of intelligence fueled her ability to be seemingly all-knowing and omnipresent what like that's a load of big words that don't actually make any sense I don't understand what that means Dr. Sullivan's probably not even a real doctor if that's what she's saying also I want to have a name or a term or something so I can look it up because I don't understand people were saying when I googled it I was trying to research it. I was so confused about it some people were saying oh she has disassociative identity disorder like she has multiple fragmented personalities like alters and she you know one will come out and then it will recede and another one will come out but when was that ever shown in the show like actually happening with her switch and I heard other stuff just saying we know Mona has a personality disorder and that's why she hurt the girls what does that mean there are loads of personality disorders I just it's not really enough for me if you're not going to know how to do it properly why give her a mental illness at all can't you just have her be like a really mean petty cyber bully and leave it at that like why do you need to get involved with the whole psychology stuff if you don't know what it is or how to explain it in like a sensitive way Radley the mental hospital is terrifying dolls, nasty aggressive doctors, people at the front desk are rude, creepy white building, ivy, spooky at night, long creepy and murder takes place there, you know parents dropping off their kids and leaving them, it's a really scary place and that makes you think what would happen to me if I opened up about a problem I was having, would I end up in Radley or one of those places, it makes it seem really scary and also the girls attitudes when they need to see a therapist is really negative, you know they're like oh this is so dumb and they're starching around like this is stupid like they don't want to be there which maybe if you were a teenager watching it would make you think that's how you should react a fun way of wrapping up this video I thought would be to actually read your comments about Mona because I asked you guys to send in your comments and I was like tell me your feelings what do you think about her what do you like what do you dislike you know how she was presented everything because I was so curious to know I asked you to send them in on Instagram and DM me about it and I just chose the ones I thought were the most relevant but Jodie said I think Mona's redemption arc should have led to her being a kind of anti-hero I mean she kind of is but she could have become a kind of double agent who worked for whoever as it suited her yes the lies bullied her but in my opinion she did far worse to them than they did to her true as someone who was bullied I know I never have done the things she did to the people who bullied me maybe she could have become someone who worked primarily on the liar's side but only when it suited her especially because her skills could have been useful it would have been cool to have a character like her where you could never fully trust whether she was on your side or not you never knew who she was really working for and a lot of the time it would have been herself that's true and I kind of was getting those vibes already but I think they could have gone further with it her working for the A team on behalf of the liars would have certainly been more believable than any of the boyfriends doing it and the a-team would have gotten much more use out of her I think Toby doing it like oh I'll go in the a-team for you just didn't make much sense and it would have made more sense for someone like Mona to do that to go and get info or something lovely Blaney said Mona never got a fair shot as being seen as an actual person when she essentially played the role of Allison through a to escape her bullying and insert herself into her friend group she was acting like Allison that's why it would have been better if Allison was a behind CC and behind AD I agree if you're going to have Mona pretending to be Allison this whole time so we're meant to kind of think the person stalking them is like Allison like the A text the way A behaves the messages the threats it all feels like Allison talking not Mona so if that's the case if you're giving off Allison vibes just make it freaking Allison why make it an Allison copycat when you could actually have it be Allison that's so much scarier and I agree so much it actually makes me annoyed like I agree they said take away all the twin stuff and have Cece being a secret Hastings as her motivation for terrorizing Spencer family specifically and then say that Allison did it because she was upset that she ran away because of Mona and her friends bonded with each other and outgrew her while she was in hiding wouldn't that have been better if the girls bonded with Mona and Allison got jealous and that's one of the reasons she became a that would have
would have been good. This would complete Mona and Alison's arcs. They could have constantly switched spots of being the villain and victim, but this time it would be final. Mona's finally seen as a real person, able to get past her dark impulses, while Ali sunk into her manipulation. Maybe just switching the roles a bit and having Mona coming good and Alison being bad and being jealous would make a lot more sense. Austin said, I feel the reason Ali believed Mona was because she felt threatened by her, even when she was nerdy Mona. Ali saw she had more of a leader personality like her, which is why she was never let in the group. She wasn't just smart or loyal like the others, she had it all. I really feel after the dollhouse or even just when Ali came back, it should have been Mona being the new leader of the group, not Ali, because she is more in common with the other four girls, not Ali. She was kidnapped and put in the dollhouse, unlike Ali. They went through that shared experience, right? I also think Mona carried the whole show. She was the original A, she was the one trying to find AD, and she really was the one who did getting back in the A game in season three. She was so underrated, she should have been the fifth liar. I agree. They had a real gem when it came to Mona, and the writers kind of just missed the mark with sort of seeing that potential she had. This person said about Mona, she was always portrayed as the villain, and the show almost completely left out that she was actually a victim too, and the girls bullied her. It's like the show forgot about that part. And afterwards, the show blamed it on her being mentally unwell instead of her traumatic experience with bullying, just so the girls seemed nicer, more likable, and justified in blaming her. I don't like how Mona tried to change multiple times, helped them, but the girls never trusted her, they only used her, and she never got the true redemption arc she deserved. I think the show would have been so much better if they showed the girls understanding they had a role in her mental breakdown, apologizing, then becoming friends with her. It would have been more relatable as realistically many girls in school bullied other girls and then regretted and learned from it. It would have made the girls seem more realistic, characters with flaws, flaws that they can acknowledge and learn from. I agree so much. It would have been great. Simone said without her fully joining the main cast of Lies, it felt like they were just keeping the door open for her to be evil at any point, while still trying to make her seem redeemable so they could use her to forward the plot. I don't think she's the most mishandled character in the show, but as with so many things in the show, there was so much missed potential. This person said, I really liked Mona. She was a great character, but of course she had to be the bad guy. I kind of feel like the writers didn't do her justice. On the one hand, she was my favorite A, and I think her backstory made the most sense. On the other hand, I liked the nice Mona, the good friend, smart and ambitious, the fashion icon. She had such a detailed character, and I would have loved it if she'd been a good person in the end. I think she's so likable, you just sort of want her to win in the end, don't you? Because she's just so interesting. Hanya said, I understand the girls had so much trauma because of Mona torturing them for so long. I get it. But to think they were the whole reason she was like this and they still never truly cared about her and even though Hannah did she lost interest in Mona too. Mona was always alone and the girls always said sorry for letting Ali treat Mona like that and they regret it but they never really meant that. I say that because they kept saying sorry to Mona like oh I'm sorry but they always left her out and made her feel like the odd one out and yes it's because of her A era but even when they didn't know it was her she was always a black sheep. And Medini Cole said I don't think Mona was ever given a fair chance to heal. She was always demonized and told she was evil so she became what they kept forcing on her. Steven said I really did like Mona as a character and she really did develop into a better person but that was ruined with her dollhouse with Alex and Mary in the finale. You know, when I first read this comment, I was like, oh, pretty basic comment, you know, nothing particularly like grabbing. But then I read it over again and I was like, wait, because somehow this is so right. I was liking Mona so much, but then in that finale with the dollhouse, with keeping Alex and Mary there kidnapped, it was so dumb. I think it really undermines her. Like, I think Janelle Paris said, oh, it couldn't have been a better ending for Mona, and it's great she thinks that, but Mona still seems so, like, lonely, and the thought of her just being there, supervising them in her dollhouse is odd, and very, like, obvious. It's just a very cheap, not subtle way of, of showing her character, so I actually agree with that so much. Felt Dawson said, I thought it was interesting that both Ali and Mona gravitated towards Hannah, but in opposite ways. Ali targeted her the most, but Mona became her close friend. I would have liked to maybe see her be a fifth liar, but as the writers have proven, they cannot for the life of them write a good redemption arc. So I'm glad they sort of left her out of the core group because she got to stay badass, true. Um, unpopular opinion, she should have died when she was captured by A, she shouldn't have been in the dollhouse, she should have just died in season five like we thought she did. It would have raised the stakes so much and made it much more dangerous, but when she lived it just proved the writers don't have the guts to kill off a main girl. If the writers actually wanted the dollhouse to be scary, there could have been 
a scene where all the liars were forced to attend Mona's funeral hosted by A or something like that. Just one scene that would have proven the writers could do something drastic and all the girls were actually in danger because they'd been kidnapped and held in an underground bunker. Again, it wasn't actually scary for the viewer. And this person, I, can't, I don't have your name, sorry, I cut it off, but they said um, Mona was terrible after season two. Her being A was perfect, it made sense, it didn't contradict anything, but everything after that was hot garbage. She kept switching from heel to face. Her allegiances and motivations were wonky. I can't buy any of the other girls forgiving her and I don't buy her forgiving the girls for their sins. If it was up to me, I would have killed her like they did in the books. Her character arc had reached its natural conclusion by that point. I find that interesting. Misha said, I remember a comment um, in a flashback. Alison said, cancer patients had better hair than Mona. That was the perfect opportunity to switch to Mona and show how she snapped and drew more people in. Show basically how it affected Mona to be bullied. If we want to feel for Mona, we need more flashbacks and parts of the story from her point of view. There was none. We had to piece it together on our own. That's not how you write those things. They should have showed us Mona's perspective more. I actually think that would have been great. I never considered that. But when you look at the narrative perspective and stuff, where the hell was Mona? Like, I wanted to see more from her point of view. Marku said, Mona was what Ali could have been, even if a redemption arc was still done. Mona was trying to change to be better, but we could still see her brilliance and skills and manipulation and puzzles. And Mona was still recognizable, even as she was changing, which is true. That never happened to Alison. I loved her relationship with Hannah and her A reveal was the best. My only complaint being that I wish the book and show had had her reveal it to Hannah instead of Spencer. It would have been even better. I agree. It's really, it still bugs me. It's really odd that Hannah just wasn't there for that and it was Spencer and Mona when they don't even really like each other that much. It just bugs me a bit. I've got another PLL video coming, my cool summer video, so make sure you subscribe for those. My Pretty Little Lies playlist will be in the description so you can go and binge watch all my videos about the show. I've done a whole bunch and I'm a commentary and movie YouTuber so I do this sort of stuff regularly. But yeah, I will see you guys for my next video.